The topic of uh, my lesson, Epidemic and the Witch Hunt, relate to a problem that has been uh, widely discussed by historiography, but it's not just a matter of uh, scholarship, because uh, it is a, a common idea that uh, in certain times, in certain difficult times, like the times of uh, epidemics, and particularly some kind of epidemics like the plague, the Black Death, that occurred uh, during the past centuries, there has been an increase in the, some kind of uh, persecutions, and especially the persecution of the witches. But before we can uh, enter the topic, we need to explain what do we mean when we talk about witch hunt and uh, witchcraft. The idea we have uh, now of uh, witchcraft is usually really related to that of magic, also of uh, positive magic. Uh, given a lot of uh, movies and popular literature that deal with this kind of stuff, and um, underlined a positive nature of uh, witchcraft, like uh, witches uh, or wizards uh, related to past knowledge, pre-Christian knowledge, and uh, like the druidical knowledge. But of course, this is uh, uh, something that uh, we can understand in the present times. It is a result of a re-evaluation of uh, witches and wizards in a light of uh, the revival that uh, we have uh, with uh, today's Wiccas and other kind of movements of this kind. But in the past centuries, witchcraft uh, was meant to be something specific. It is harmful magic. It is uh, a magic that can be done uh, through the sight, through the touch, through some uh, specific rituals that have to be learned. And uh, in Western societies, it has to do with uh, the devil, with the worship of the devil. In a general sense, witchcraft uh, is a, a phenomenon that we can find in uh, almost every society. Every society might experience a kind of a harmful magic, a threat to the nature through the people. And uh, this kind of uh, witchcraft has been uh, studied by anthropologists usually. Uh, while for uh, the Western society, the European Western societies, witchcraft is something different. Uh, witchcraft is a, a specific kind of uh, harmful magic that is done with the deal with the devil. Witches, wizards, they do a pact with the devil that lead them to certain actions against other people, against the nature animals, weather magic that can be particularly disastrous in certain times. So to understand the witch hunt, we have to refer to this specific kind of magic. And uh, also the witch hunt is something that uh, happened in the past of uh, Europe and is absent from uh, other societies that can experience witchcraft, that, can, that have a perception of witchcraft, but that didn't have in the history something that uh, can be called the witch hunt. Witch hunts in Europe started in the 15th centuries and lasted until the beginning of the 18th century. Trials 
could be led by the Inquisition, clerical authorities, local bishops, or in many cases, civic authorities. And uh, those trials led to many death sentences. Scholarship today is convinced that uh, between 60,000 and 80,000 people were condemned to the stake for uh, crimes related to witchcraft. Most of them women, more or less 25%, 30% of them were men. Half of these death sentences happened in Germany and the rest in the other parts of uh, Europe. Mediterranean countries like Italy or Spain were less inclined to condemn to the stake. France too, where the phenomenon was quite widespread, but uh, even if local trials led to death sentences, Many of those condemnations uh, were abolished by central authorities. And um, the beginning of uh, the witch hunt in the 15th century is usually related to the epidemics that started infuriating in Europe in 1347-1348. The plague that arrived in Europe uh, around those times was different from uh, all the various epidemics that uh, the Middle Ages had known before, like smallpox, leprosy, measles, typhoid fever. It was something unknown because uh, Europe had uh, a first occurrence of the plague in the Justinian time, around the 6th century. Those plague lasted uh, with uh, lesser waves until the 8th century and then disappeared. So the plague, the Black Death, was something totally new that wiped away entire villages and uh, led to a demographic crisis that was totally new to Europe. Many sources of the time, including the famous uh, Giovanni Boccaccio's account of the arrival of the Black Death in Florence record with increasing anguish the devastating effect of the Black Death on the population, especially the population of towns. People didn't know what was bringing the death to them. They only knew the horrific effects that it produced on the bodies. The sudden arrival of the death provoked many religious phenomena, praying in the streets, thinking that God was punishing humanity for its sins. But also there were scenes of uh, flight from the cities, people trying to escape the death, going to live uh, in uh, remote places, hoping that death could not arrive and catch them. But because medicine didn't know any kind of remedy for the plague, 
everything was without sense. The purpose of this sudden wave of death was inexplicable to the societies. And one of the reaction might be to find a scapegoat to explain all the suffering of those times. The 14th century had already begun with a crisis due to a climate change for the worst. The climate, the weather became colder than it was uh, in a century before and it brought famine all over Europe. And then there was war, like uh, the hundred year war between France and England that provoked bankruptcy for the Italian bankers and uh, merchants. So even before the plague began, Europe was involved in the, a general crisis. And uh, in a certain way, this grew a need for a scapegoat that we can see in the worsening conditions of uh, minorities, especially the Jews, but uh, also the Muslims in uh, Spain or some categories of uh, sick people like the lepers. Lepers and Jews were accused in the around the 20s of uh, having poisoned many wells in the southern part of France. This uh, poisoning of the wells it was said to be sponsored by the Muslims. Uh, not the Muslims uh, in Europe, but the Muslims outside Europe that uh, had paid both Jews and the lepers uh, to poison the wells where the Christians uh, went to have the water, went to drink their, uh, their water. But apart from uh, generic reasons and situations. Uh, one major change has to be underlined. In those years, we see uh, through many writings a growing concern for the role of the devil in societies and uh, also for a peculiar kind uh, of magic that involves uh, necromancy and uh, with necromancy we mean uh, the calling the summoning of uh, demons that uh, have to act uh, in favor of the summoner demons there are forced to help the summoner to do harm to people uh, to weather to animals and uh, this kind of uh, harmful magic uh, at the beginning of the of the century is uh, linked to heresy this linking of a uh, harmful magic to heresy has a great significance because it meant that magic uh, could be persecuted by the Inquisition, like heresy was already, and uh, also that uh, uh, this uh, kind of persecution could lead to trials that ended with the burning at the stake. Burning at the stake was the typical uh, condemnation that uh, was uh, used for uh, heretics in uh, Europe already since uh, the beginning of the 13th century. Uh, so a century after this beginning, uh, we have also uh, what was called at the time uh, maleficia, 
doing harmful magic uh, strictly linked to heresy and um, the church uh, began to call this kind uh, of uh, magicians who practiced this magic this harmful magic a uh, new sect this new sect of witches was taught to fly on objects, sometimes brooms, to places where all witches gathered around uh, the devil. This place is usually called the Sabbath. The idea of the Sabbath starts at the end uh, of the 15th century even if uh, in centuries before that there were legends uh, folkloric beliefs that uh, we can link to the sabbath like uh, the tregenda or the stregatum as it is sometimes called we can go back to talk about the wrong belief that affirms the existence of witches, that they really exist when they do not, because they are demons that take the shape of certain old women or beasts to go plundering. So wrote the Dominican father, Domenico Cavalca, in his treatise about the sins of men and women, and also Another Dominican, Jacopo Passavanti, wrote, It is known that demons change themselves into men and women who are alive, or into horses and asses, and go by night together in certain places where people can see them and are brought to think that they really are the men and women they look like, and this in some places is called tragenda. Also, there was the influence of uh, ancient uh, literature like Apuleius' Golden Ass or Metamorphosis, where many stories of uh, metamorphosis, of uh, people changing into animals, were told, like the stories of uh, Lucius, who oints himself and turns into an ass. And uh, this kind of uh, literature, even through writings and translations or through graphic images, uh, became uh, really popular in the Renaissance, which is the age, the time uh, when uh, the new idea of uh, witchcraft came out. What those Dominican fathers were recording uh, in their writings are uh, folkloric beliefs. Since the ancient times, especially in Italy, it was common to believe that uh, women, sometimes also men, were capable of uh, turning themselves into different shapes with the help of uh, rituals. But these folkloric beliefs had stayed hidden from uh, the high, the elite culture for many centuries. In those years, the Inquisition and the uh, practice of uh, speaking to people through sermons and also listening to their confessions were, was going to shape a new identity for all those folkloric beliefs. And uh, the demonic influence that, uh, as I said, is so common for these times gave them a completely different twist. All beliefs in the 
changing people became uh, the acts of the demons that convinced people that they could change. There were illusions brought by the devil, but also these people who believed in these things conceded to the devil a great power. So the idea of a European witchcraft is linked to heresy, to the surviving of a ancient tradition and beliefs to the pact with the demon and so the idea of a new sect of uh, harmful witches apart from this which are the elements that uh, uh, we can relate to epidemics uh, what was the type of magic that was uh, directly linked to the spread of uh, epidemic or disease. Weather magic, which means the ability to intervene on the weather, causing storms to ruin uh, the harvest or to kill uh, animals and plants, was a, a form of magic uh, already known in the past, in the former centuries. Anyway, with the 15th century, it starts being associated uh, strictly, as this drawing uh, show, with the action of uh, witches that uh, again along with the devil uh, cause uh, harm to the harvest in a new terrible way and of course this was uh, a kind of magic that uh, was linked not just to epidemics but uh, to uh, the elements of uh, nature The agrarian economy of uh, the times was, uh, of course, uh, particularly in danger before weather magic. At the end of the 15th century, the Dominican Inquisitor, Eric Kramer, also known as Institor, wrote a treatise called Malleus Maleficarum, which means the hammer of witches, where he describes many kinds of uh, harmful magic done by witches with the help of uh, the devil. And uh, among those practices, an important role is given to weather magic that he describes through many episodes. Here is one. It is good idea to turn to events discovered by us. In the Diocese of Constance, 28 German miles from Ravensburg, in the direction of Salzburg, a very savage hailstorm was stirred up, and for a distance of one mile, it crushed the produce, crops and vineyards to such an extent that two years later the harvest in the vineyards was hardly judged to be plentiful. Then the matter was reported by the notary of the Inquisition. The popular outcry necessitating an Inquisition, since certain people, or rather virtually all the inhabitants of the town, deemed that these events had taken place through acts of sorcery. Hence, with the agreement of the chief magistrates, an inquisition, in accordance with legal requirement concerning the heresy of sorceress, was conducted by us for half a month. The trail led to two persons in particular, 
though the number of other suspects was not small. One was called Agnes, the bathkeeper, the other, Anna of Mindelheim. They were arrested and placed apart in different prisons, the one knowing absolutely nothing about the other. The following morning, the bathkeeper was exposed to questioning under the lightest torture in the presence of the notary by the ruler or leader of the citizens, a great zealous for the faith called Geller, and by others of the chief magistrates whose assistance he has enlisted. Without a doubt, she had on her person the sorcery of silence, which judges must always be aware of, since she asserted her innocence during the first onslaught with the spirit not of a woman but of a man. Nonetheless, since it was the favour of God's clemency that so great a crime should not pass unpunished, all of a sudden, when she was set free from her chains, though still in the torture chamber, she freely revealed all the crimes that she had committed. She was asked by the notary about the articles from the testimony of the witnesses about the acts of sorcery inflicted on humans and domestic animals. On this basis, the suspicion that she was a sorceress had been made violent. And although no witness had given testimony against her about the renunciation of the faith and the commission of cardinal filthiness with an incubus demon, such ceremonies being the closest secret of the sect. Nonetheless, after she had pleaded guilty, following the listing of distances of harm that had been inflicted on humans and domestic animals, she made a public confession of all the other things when interrogated about the renunciation of the faith and diabolical filthy acts committed with the incubus demon. She claimed that for more than 18 years she had submitted sexually to that incubus in addition to renouncing the faith in every way. After these proceedings were, connected, were completed, she was asked whether she knew anything about the events connected with the hailstorm mentioned above, and she answered that she did. When asked by what method and how, she answered, I was in my house, and at noon the demon summoned me, telling me to take myself to an open country, the plain of Kuppel, which is its name, and to bring a little water with me. When I asked what work he wished to perform with the water, he answered that he wished to make rain. So, as I passed through the city gate, I found the demon standing under a tree. When asked by the judge under which tree, she answered, under the one opposite the tower, pointing it out. And when asked what she had done under the tree, she answered, the demon told me to dig a small hole and pour the water into it. When asked whether they had sat together, she answered, while I sat, the demon stood. When then asked with what words or by what methods she had stirred the water. She answered, I stirred it with my finger, but in the name of that devil and all the other demons. The judge in turn asked, what happened with the water? She answered, it disappeared and the devil took it up into the air. When then asked whether she had had an associate, she answered, opposite under such and such tree, I had the other sorceress under arrest as my associate. She named Anna of Mindelheim. What she did, I don't know. Finally, when asked about the interval of time between the water being raised up and the hailstorm, she answered, the delay lasted until I arrived at home. Here we can clearly see all the elements of the witch hunt put together. There is a crisis that 
hit a community. It can be, like in this case, a, a terrible hailstorm. It can be epi epidemics, like uh, the plague. All of the sudden, the village starts to wonder who is responsible for all this. And commonly, the answer is to try to find out a scapegoat, usually women, like in this case, two women, maybe more, but the inquisitor is not sure about the others. So he chooses to take two of them and they put them under torture, light torture, as he says. And uh, when the woman uh, doesn't talk, uh, he writes that uh, she acts like a man, not a woman. And this means that it is the devil who is helping the woman to remain silent, not to feel the terror and the pain of torture. But then uh, all of a sudden, the woman starts to talk, and so it's God who is forcing her to talk and to reveal all the, all the harmful magic that she has done, and also calling, uh, not as a witness, but as a, a partner in crime, calling as a partner in crime another woman. Of course, the one who they already have in their custody. And uh, of course, this uh, interrogation ends up in a quick trial and both the women are condemned to the stake. Also, there is the relationship with the devil, which is very important. Uh, the woman has a uh, sexual intercourse with the devil uh, which is uh, an incubus an uh, active uh, devil and uh, also this demon is going to tell the woman all the rituals that she has to do uh, in order to provoke the hellstorm and uh, also he waits until uh, she goes home before provoking the, the storm as a, an act of uh, kindness towards her. It was uh, widely debated uh, also in the Malleus Maleficarum if the shape-shifting, the metamorphosis of these women had to be considered real or hallucinations, illusions provoked by the demon. Witches could go to the Sabbath riding on an animal, usually a symbol of uh, the devil, like in this case where an old woman with the broom is riding an imaginary animal, maybe a goat, or more usually, women could be described as uh, shape-shifting into animals, different kind uh, of animals, not only the goat. And uh, with this form, they went to the Sabbath where they paid, paid the homage to the devil. There were intellectuals not only inquisitors, who were deeply convinced that the devil could actually transform the body of uh, witches into animals, that these were not illusions of the devil, but something that was happening for real. Among those, there was uh, the famous Jean Baudin, who wrote about uh, uh, the new kind uh, of uh, state in France, uh, the absolutist state of France, 
and with in the 16th century one of uh, the main minds uh, on the political scene who deeply believed in the reality of witchcraft and the power of witches and that the devil could turn the bodies like the ancient said uh, like Apuleius said in the metamorphosis that was for real and it was happening also in his times it is probably not by accident that the witch hunt reached its peak in the so-called little ice age between the end of the 16th and the beginning of the 17th century when Europe was uh, hit by an extraordinary cold and uh, also when uh, the continent uh, was involved by, by a return of the Black Death of the Plague. The Little Ice Age is well uh, represented in many works of art, especially uh, from uh, northern parts of Europe, uh, when, where we can see the landscape all made of ice and uh, sometimes with village feasts uh, with people skating uh, on uh, ice and um, it can give uh, a false impression of uh, happiness but uh, also those times uh, were the times of uh, the 30 years war in Germany and uh, along with the war and again with the epidemics we have uh, an increasing uh, force of uh, the witch hunt that really reaches its peak in those years among the, the between the two centuries in Italy the little ice age was in reality really mild but epidemics wasn't the black death hit milan really hard in 1630 and the famous uh, alessandro manzoni who wrote in 1840-1842 is uh, well known uh, promessi sposi added uh, a history of the column of infamy at the end of the main opus. Here he tells the story of the trials held in Milan in 1630 against the untori, which mean those accused on the basis of uh, beliefs shared by almost everyone, shared by the common people that some people were spreading the plague, the disease, by poisoning doors and walls with the ointments. To push these plague spreaders to confess their crimes, crimes they of course had not committed, the judges subjected them to horrific tortures not different uh, from those of uh, the witches in the first decades of uh, the 17th century the witch hunt was ravaging germany but it was almost over in Italy, where uh, the Inquisition uh, was most interested uh, towards uh, heresy and the Reformation to stop, to prevent uh, ideas of the Reformation to spread all over Italy. But uh, when in uh, 1630 the plague struck Milan again, 
it was the same uh, answer, the same uh, search for a scapegoat, not a witch in this case, but uh, other sorts of people who could not escape the stake. A barber, Gian Giacomo Mora, was found guilty of having spread the disease and was uh, tortured to death. His house was destroyed at, uh, at the place of it. A column of uh, infamy was uh, erected to be removed only in uh, 1778.